Hello everyone, welcome to the Kinematics and Dynamics of Machinery class. Today's video we're gonna discuss the CAM mechanism and we're gonna know how we can do design for these types of mechanisms. Design in terms of coming up with the profile of the CAM uh, that would be needed to achieve a specific motion as I'm gonna show you with more details. So initially let us start with discussing what does it mean a CAM mechanism in general. So, as already written here, a CAM mechanism usually consists of two main components or two main elements, mechanical elements. The first one is the CAM, the second one is the forward. So, the CAM is something that rotates and gives a specific motion to the forward. So, a CAM mechanism is, is used, basically, is used to transform one type of motion and the most general type of motion that should be transformed into another form is the rotational motion and is going to be transformed into another rotational motion or translational motion to the follower. Some of the followers would rotate, some of the other followers are moving, and this is the common thing that it is commonly we are converting the rotational motion of the cam into another motion to the follower that in most of the cases is going to be translational motion. And this is what we're going to focus on through this part of the course on the cam design or the cam mechanism. Also, a cam mechanism gives a specified motion or a specific motion to the follower, as I'm going to show you. It gives a control, or in other words, we can consider that it gives us a control on the motion transformation from one form to the other form. Like, like as I said, we have a, a cam, and this cam with a specific profile. This profile is gonna is gonna give us a specific motion to the follower. So the idea that we come up with a certain profile of the cam to achieve a certain movement of the uh, of the follower itself, as it will be clear as we move through this today's video. So generally speaking, we can say that a CAM mechanism can be defined as a machine element because it is one of the components of that would be used for a machine. So it is a machine element or a machine system, like a tiny or submachine system that uses a curved outline or a curved groove within the CAM which by its oscillation or rotation and motion, it gives a, a predetermined specified motion. Like this motion that is going to be given to the follower, it will be predetermined. So what does it mean predetermined? It means that you, do, you already given a specific profile and your objective is just to come up with the, I'm sorry, you already given a specific motion for the profile and your objective is just to come up with the cam that is needed to achieve this movement this is specified, this predefined specified motion to the follower itself. So this is the basic, this is what we are interested to do, is that the displacement of the follower, the velocity and the acceleration, the motion of the follower will be given, what should be the cam then that is going to be used for giving this specified motion for the follower to another element called the follower. So any cam mechanism, it consists basically, as we mentioned, of two components, the cam and the follower. The thing that gives motion to the other thing is the cam gives motion to the follower. This is how this mechanism is working and this is uh, and, and I'm gonna give you an example right now about uh, the theory or the idea of the cam mechanism. So generally speaking, the cam ha it has a very important function in the operation of many classes of machines. It is used a lot in machines, especially those of automatic parts, uh, such as printing presses, shoe machinery, uh, textile machinery, gear cutting machines, and screw machines. There are in any other, uh, the, uh, these cam mechanisms are used a lot. And the very, very common type of cam mechanism that would be exist is the one that is used with the heat combustion engines of your engine, of your car. I mean, like, uh, like how we can control the uh, best um, movement in addition to the uh, the valve that open for the gas burning. This is basically uh, one of the essential components that use for the heat combustion engines in the in the machines and in the uh, in the vehicles. So, what is the basic idea of a cam mechanism? To explain it to you, basically, let us consider that you do have this disc. Let us assume that we do have this disc. So let us consider this disc 
and this is the follower or another component, whatever it is, forget about the names for now. And this is a spring, and this is like something like slot or a guide that we give a confinement to this component to just move horizontally in the horizontal direction. Like if we try to push this component to the right, it's gonna be pushed. And because of the spring, if we release this force, this component is gonna be pushed back again because of the spring that already existing or working here, right? And since this component is already moving in this horizontal slot, so it is confined to just to move horizontally. And let us assume that we give rotation to this disk, just disk. Do you think that because of the rotation of this disk, that this component is going to move either horizontal or uh, in horizontal to either to the right or the left? No. Why? Because simply this disk it rotates about its center point. So the distance from this point of rotation to any point that belongs to the circumference of this disk, this distance is equivalent, it is constant distance. It means that, and all the time, as you can see, this component is in contact. This is like the contact problem because the, basically this is a contact problem like what we discussed in the previous videos. But as you can see, the distance between the center point to any point that belongs to the circumference, which it should be the tangent point or the, uh, the contact point between this component and this other component is a fixed distance. This is, this is a fixed distance all the time during the 360 degree of rotation of this disk. So this component will not going to move. And this is very clear if you just try to imagine the movement of this system. So simply we're gonna give a name to this component just it is just a disk that rotates. We do have here rotation, right? But here for this component, no motion that would be obtained up on the rotation of this disk. Why? Because we do have symmetry. We do have this disk is already rotating about the center point. So you're not gonna end up with any kind of motion of this component, right? But how about if we shifted this point which is the point of rotation, this pivot, and it became pivoted, the same disk with the same size, with the same components, but we did a little bit shift to the center point of rotation or the point of rotation of this disk. So in this cam, this disk becomes, this disk, it converts to or it works like a cam. This is the cam that I'm talking about. Now I can give this disk a name as a cam and this disk is just disk. Right, they are identical, only one difference, which is the point of rotation, why? Because as you can see, the center point, the distance from this point to the any point belong to the circumference, it became different, right? This distance is very long, this distance is shorter, and it comes very short as we're already going to the other side, right? So we'd have different distance from the point of rotation to the tangent point, to the circumference. And all the time this component, it should be tangent because of the action of the spring. All the spring, all the time this spring is compressed, all the time the spring pushes this component to be in contact at this point to the cam. With this point, with respect to the cam, it's gonna be variable point, it, a changeable point, it won't gonna be the same point, but it's gonna be the same point for this component on the right. Now I can give a name to this component as follower. Follower, it means that something that follow another object. This component, its motion, it depend on the cam. So this is the cam itself, and this is its follower. Right, and all of this is commonly known as the cam mechanism. So when we talk about the cam mechanism, we are talking about the two components, not just one of them, right? So as we give rotation to this cam in any direction in the 360 degree rotation, you're gonna end up with a horizontal movement right or left to this follower depending on the angle. At any specific angle, there is a specific location of this follower with respect to a reference point. Make sense? Like, for example, at this instant of time, <clears throat> or at this angle, 
the follower is already already located here. As we give rotation with a little bit small angle, this this follower is gonna be pushed back and it's gonna keep pushed back till a while. Then it will return back again to be moving forward to the to the to the left. So it's gonna all the time there is a specific angle within this camera just giving 360 degree rotation. Part of this 360 degrees will be used in pushing this follower back. And the other, the rest of the part will be used for pushing the follower forward, the follower forward, okay? So this is basically how this me mechanism is working, very simple. Like we would like to end up with this asymmetry, this like breakdown of the symmetrical things. This is symmetrical object that everything is identical around this center point, but here we do have different things around the center point or the point of rotation, I mean, the point of rotation of this cam or this disc that works like a cam in this way. So this is the basic idea of the cam mechanism. This cam, it would be with any profile, whatever it is, depending on the profile of this cam, we are gonna end up with a specific motion to this follower. Like, as I mentioned, uh, there is a specific movement. This follower is gonna exhibit only two types of motion, like it move backward and forward. But for how long it should be moved backward, for how long it should be moved forward, and what is the speed, the velocity of moving it backward and forward? What is the acceleration by which this follower should be moved backward or forward? This basically depends on the profile and the shape. What I mean by the profile of the cam is the shape of the cam. This is a cam, this is a, this is a specific profile. Even we can change, there are lots of things that by which we can change the profile of a cam. This is a cam with a specific profile. We may have a cam with this profile. And this is the point of rotation of this cam. And this cam is gonna keep rotating. And there is a follower that it should be located somewhere here, like this one. This is a cam mechanism. So this follower will exhibit a movement with a displacement, velocity, and acceleration that is totally different than this one. Why? What is the reason? We're still using the same follower, even the same spring, right? But the difference is the cam profile, the shape of the cam. Here, this is different shape than this one. So this gives a specific movement with displacement, velocity and acceleration to the follower that is totally different than the other follower. Make sense? So our objective through this chapter, this part, is to teach you how we can come up with the suitable design or shape of the cam that gives a predetermined movement of the follower. Like the movement of the follower would be given to you first then based on this displacement and velocity and acceleration diagrams or description of the movement of the follower itself, based on this movement of the follower that would like to achieve what should be the cam profile. Make sense? This is the objective of, of this part very quick. Before we move to how we can do this, let us discuss here the different types, the different types of cams. And there are lots of ways or methods by which we can classify or give a classification to the cam mechanism. We may classify the cam mechanism based on the shape of the cam. Of the cam. We can give classification based on the follower, based uh, the shape of the follower itself. We can give classification based on the type of motion between that it will be converted. As we said that the cam mechanism is gonna be used in converting one type of motion to another one. So there are some cams that would be used for converting rotational motion to another rotational motion or rotational motion to translational motion to the follower. So this would be considered another type of the classification, right? So let us discuss here, basically the most important classification is the classification based on the shape of the cam and the shape of the follower itself. Or you could consider that we do have different forms of the cam element of the cam mechanism and the different forms or shapes of the follower element of the cam mechanism. So let us start with the classification of this cam mechanism based on the cam shape. So we do have plate, sometimes it is called disc, Sometimes it is called radial cam. All the three names are the same component, which are the blade or the disc or the radial cam mechanism, which should be typically, this is a schematic representation of this mechanism. Like you're gonna find that this is the cam element and definitely this is gonna be the follower element. 
And as you should understand that this full order should be connected somehow with a spring here. Like this spring is gonna keep pushing this full order to be all the time in direct contact or in contact with this cam itself. So as you can see, the cam while it rotates, it's gonna push up or push down. Like if we give rotation at this instant of time, if, we, if this cam is already rotating in this direction, this full order is gonna be pushed up, right? And this is very clear because the distance, this is the pivot of the cam, the point of rotation of the cam, and accordingly, the follower is going to move up. With uh, exhibiting a rise, this, is this movement up, this rise of the follower is going to be pushed up. It means it will be rise or it will be pushed down because of the spring itself, because we're already like, like kind of releasing this cam like if the cam is rotating in the opposite direction or even if the cam continues the rotation in this direction so after a while the distance between this point and the tangent point here or the contact point becomes shorter this is the point the distance here if we set up like a position vector as we did in the contact problem this position vector will be with variable displacement right like the magnitude here this distance is going to change it means that this follower is going to be uh, rise and return, like move up and move down, right? Or like rise and descend. So uh, this is also another schematic or representation of the same mechanism. And as you can see the follower itself, it is it has a roller. It would be with knife follower, like it connect with a point like this one. So this would be considered another, another classification of the follower or of the of the cam mechanism, but based on the follower. Like here, we can use followers as rollers with the ro rollers like this one. And this is commonly used and preferred in many of the mechanical components. But in some cases, we may use the knife one, the knife follower in this way. But there are different types of the follower that we are going to discuss. Also, there is another type of the cam that depend on the cam mechanism that depend on the shape of the cam known as the wedge cam. This like this is like a sharp edge here like inclined surface and as we give movement in either directions in one direction of the cam like this direction this funnel is going to be pushed up and pushed down depending in this way it's going to just continue moving up right but if we move the cam to the opposite direction we're going to end up with like another descent to the to the follower and definitely there should be some springs here as we discussed before right so it means that if we would like this, like, like this cam mechanism, it's gonna give us, uh, uh, converts the translational motion of the cam into another translational motion, but the follower is going to move in only one specific direction, right? If we would like to switch the direction, we have to switch the direction of the cam itself. So it has some limitation or it would be used in some cases. But anyway, this is like a cam mechanism. But this one converts the rotation motion into an, uh, to a, a translation motion to the follower as already given up there. This is cylindrical or parallel or it would be spherical mechanism or face, face cam mechanism, spherical mechanism. These are more complicated shapes of or types of the mechanism that depend that we specially design these types of cams to give with a specific profile or grooves like this is a groove. This is another groove. Here we give profile to the face of the cam itself. So in the parallel or the cylindrical cam mechanism, which would be the same concept, like we're already using this cylindrical shape or this also it is a cylindrical shape. So some people would give a name like parallel, parallel or the uh, cylindrical cam. Like this is simply a cylinder that gives rotation, just, just rotates. And there is a groove specially formed one, like we give, we form this groove within this cylinder and this is the follower, this component here is the follower of this cam. So this is the cam itself. The cam, it shouldn't be just this like this one, but the cam here, it is already a cylindrical. So that's why it is or barrel shape. So that's why it is commonly known as parallel or cylindrical cam mechanism. And this is the follower. And depending on the groove that we are going to shape within this cylinder, this follower is going to keep moving to the right or to the left, or it would rotate. It depends on the follower itself. Here we are not interested in the follower, whatever is going to rotate like this can, this case, or is going to exhibit translational motion. This follower is connected like 
here there should be like uh, like kind of groove or slot in which that this for uh, 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 this follower is just moving right and left in this way depending on the profile so as we give rotation to the cam this follower is gonna move right and then left depending on as we give rotation to this cam like a part of the 360 degrees rotation of the cam itself you're gonna find this follower moving to the left and the rest of the uh, of the rotation of the cam of the complete circle or cycle of the cam we're gonna end up with another move back of the follower right here the follower is we already converting rotation motion of the cam into translation motion to the follower here we're already converting the rotation motion of the cam to another rotation motion of the follower. So in this case, this is the follower itself. This is the cam. And for this case, this is the follower of this cam. Someone would say that, so I didn't do change in the type of motion. I do have rotation motion converting to another rotation. So what is the idea? What is the concept, right? No, we already converting to another, to the same type of motion, but with different velocity, with different displacement. So this is also, it is a beneficial mechanism that would be used in so many applications. So uh, this is for the cylindrical and the parallel. The basic idea and something that you should understand that the follower cannot be used for moving the cam. Or basically we are not doing this. The basic idea that we are using the cam to give movement to the follower of the cam. So that's why the follower is the follower to the cam, that it obey all the time the cam. Like it depends on the cam rotation, we're gonna end up with a specific motion to the follower. So the follower, its movement mainly comes because of the rotation of the cam. So if the cam is not rotating, there is no movement to the follower and the follower is not gonna be able to move the cam itself. We would have face cam. This is another type of the cam mechanism that depend on the shape. Again, we just interested in the shape of the cam that it is face cam. Like we do have this cylindrical part and this part is going to rotate in either directions. And this is gonna be the cam and at the tip of this like cylindrical tube, we're gonna have, we're gonna form a specific profile. And all the time, this is the follower, and this follower all the time is gonna be connected or because of the, uh, with the aid of some springs. So we're gonna add here some springs to keep this one is already in contact to the cam. So as the cam rotates, you're gonna find, depending on the profile of this face of this edge, we're gonna end up like with pushing up or pushing down, rise or return, rise or descend of the follower as we give as we give rotation to the cam. This is the face. This is also another thing that work in the horizontal direction. This is in the vertical direction. Anyway, we'd have like a simple cylinder, but over the edge, the face of this cylinder, we are gonna end up with this face. We form a specific profile to this edge uh, that is gonna give a specific movement to the follower. So this is gonna be again the cam and this is gonna be the follower of this cam. We may have the cam, ha the cam would have like a spherical shape with a specific groove, very similar to the barrel or the cylindrical, but this is cylindrical cam, but here it's gonna be like spherical cam. So we do have the spherical cam in this case. And as you can see, this is the pivot, it is already fixed at this point. This is the follower that already connected to the groove and there are some springs. This is, the, this is in terms of machinery things or the mechanical component is working as retaining spring. Retaining it means that it's just to keep one component in direct contact or in active contact with another component. Like without this spring, we lose the benefit of this mechanism. This mechanism is gonna be loose thing, right? So this spring is very important to keep pushing this pen, which it should be all the time squeezed within this groove of this spherical cam. And as we give rotation to this cam, this follower is going to rotate or move, uh, yeah, with a rotational motion depending on the profile of, uh, of this, or the shape of this groove, right? These are the different types of the cam mechanism, but again, this is based on the shape of the cam. This is one classification. There is another classification that basically depends on the shape of the follower itself. We may classify the cams as knife edge follower or knife edge follower cam. Like the follower itself 
it has the knife shape this is knife edge follower and this is roller follower and this one is flat follower and this is is a spherical uh, uh faced uh, or face follower or we can give it like curve it show uh, or uh, or spherical face follower so these are different types basically this classification again depends on the shape of the follower itself it would be as i mentioned knife the tangent to the to the cam and to just one point it would be roller it would be flat it would be spherical thing as already given up there right as you can see even there is another classification that this knife it would be in line what does it mean in line it means that the point of contact or the center line of the follower itself it is conceded to the point of rotation of the cam so there is no offset distance here like this one this one so we're going to say that this is in line knife uh edge follower it would be offset it means that we can give a shift between the center line of the follower and the point of rotation of uh i mean that the center line of the follower won't going to be conceding to the point of rotation of uh, of the cam itself so it is going to be like offset knife edge follower here the follower is already pivoted we could use this follower like in line like the same way like we could use this follower like to have a translation and motion in this way to the follower as we discussed up there right but basically we would use the follower to have a rotation so it's going to be pivoted roller follower or it would be even a line roller follower uh, it depends here we do have a flat one but this flat is offset as i mentioned why because the center line the center the center axis of this follower in comparison to the center line or the point of rotation of the cam there is an offset distance between them so this offset we would have we may have in line flat face follower or we may have offset flat face follower in line it means that this center line will be typically conceded to the center line of the pivot point of the cam like as we did here in the in the knife so this is also another classification people deal with these offset or in line pivoted like this one it is pivoted spherical face or it would we may have pivoted but it shouldn't it, it, like spherical and it would be in line or offset like these cases so we do have this is another classification by the way like people would give another classification which is different here so we do have classification that just depend on the shape of the follower whatever it is knife roller spherical flat or it would be like as i mentioned it depends on the arrangement of this follower with respect to the cam is it in line is it offset is it pivoted like these two cases right uh, like here for example we do have this is a disc plate or disc cam and this is roller follower in line so if we gonna give a clear description of this cam mechanism we gonna give we gonna say that this cam mechanism is disc cam in line roller follower so what does it mean this it means that the camera is plate cam or this cam shape with a pivot in this way and it is in line it means that this follower is going to exhibit translation and motion because if we give rotation to the cam we're going to end up with the translation and motion to this follower and this its center line it should be considered to the point of rotation of the cam like this one this one is going to be this cam this cam but offset offset roller follower the follower should be roller like this one and it should be offset it means that it will exhibit some rotation uh, i'm sorry translation motion to the rotation of the cam about this pivot point but there should be a shift between the center line and the pivot point here there should be an offset distance make sense like this one this one is in line because it's going to have like translation motion this one is in line in line face or flat face flat face follower and the cam itself the cam itself it is this cam 
Make sense? We do have here for this case also, we do have the knife. We do have this cam, but knife in line follower uh, mechanism, right? These different types of the mechanism, whatever it is, knife or ruler. We're gonna focus a lot over the flat thing. We're gonna cover this one, but these are the three main types that we are going to discuss or mainly gonna focus on through this part of the course. Like I'm going to show you how we can come up with the design. Again, the objective is that you will be given a specific displacement velocity and acceleration. You're gonna will be given a specific movement to the follower. Whatever it is, knife, roller for or inline or offset with respect to a disc cam. This is the only type of the cam that we're gonna consider through this part. But if you, there are some other methods and approaches that would be used definitely for the other, for the other types of the cams. But this is the type of the cam mechanism that we're gonna consider. Like we gonna have all the time the cam, it will be this cam, which is commonly known as the, it would be used as radial or the plate cam mechanism, the blade cam, and we gonna have a roller follower and the follower is gonna do translational motion only. We won't gonna consider the case that you have the cam that do rotation for this part. But we're just gonna focus on the translational motion of the follower, but following the same approach, we can do it in case that we have this following is going to uh, is going uh, is doing trans uh, rot uh, rotation and motion. But the thing that we're gonna focus on is the cam mechanism. Uh, as this cam, the follower it would be knife, it would be roller, it would be inline, or it would be offset follower. But in all the cases, the follower should be doing translation motion. The case that you do have pivoted follower with a disc cam like this one, we won't gonna cover this part uh, for this chapter. Make sense? So this is for these, these different types of the cam and it is important to acknowledge the difference between these different keywords and these different types of shapes because these words will be shown or given to you like offset, inline, so you have to distinguish between different these different terms. Make sense? So now let us move to the motion events of the follower. Here we are talking about the motion of the follower. There is no need to describe the motion of the cam because the motion of the cam is very simple. It's just rotation. You give, as we discussed in all the previous cases or types of the cam, the cam is just rotating. So we do have only one specific type of motion to the cam, and this cam will, will rotate 360 degree with a specific velocity and acceleration. Make sense? Whatever this velocity is gonna be constant, so in this case, the acceleration will be zero or a variable or a changing uh, velocity of rotation, so the angular acceleration of the follow uh, of the cam it will be definitely different. But so we are not interested of, or we definitely gonna consider the rotation of the cam and our design of the profile of the cam itself. But we are interested more in the motion of the follower itself. But why? Because we are interested in achieving this kind of movement. As I mentioned, the movement of the follower will be given to us with a certain profile and we are objective or a certain shape and we, our objective is just to come up with the suitable profile of the cam that gives this type of motion. Make sense? So that's why it is important first to discuss the different events of the follower motion. What does it mean, the events? It is not the different types of the, of the movement of the follower, but even it means that in some cases we may have the follower giving rise, assume that we do have, just to understand these different keywords, let us consider this symbol cam. Like you do have this disc cam, as we mentioned, we are gonna focus more on this part and the follower is gonna be moving vertical in this way. Whatever it is, knife, roller follower, these details we are gonna consider them later when we move to the design of the profile of the cam. Whatever it is, inline or offset like this way, here we'd have offset distance. So it doesn't matter. Like basically consider this simple cam mechanism. So as we give rotation to this cam, this fellow is gonna moving up for a while, then it's gonna move down for another part of the rotation. So this, uh, this cam rotates 360 degrees. 
part of the 360 degrees, the follower is gonna exhibit different things. It would move up, moving up, it would stop, right? And it would move down. So these are different events of the motion of this follower. Is it going to move up for how long? It's going to move down, it's going to stop how long as a part of the 360 degree of rotation. Like we would give like 100 degrees of rotation of the cam for just rising up, for moving up. We would give another 200 degrees of rotation of the cam for just moving down and with the rest is gonna be just will be used for stopping the follower. Like we would come up with a design of the follower, like the follower should move up with a cer certain velocity and uh, acceleration that is gonna stop at this level, stop at this higher level or high level for a while, for a few minutes or a few seconds basically because this mechanism is is repeating the cycle all the time, then it's gonna return back again, right? So these different events, we do have rise, we do have stop, we do have returning motion. So generally, when a cam, when the cam turns or rotates through one cycle motion, here we are talking about one cycle that is going to be repeated all the time, the follower executes a series of events that include rise, doubles, and returns. Doubles, it means that the rise, the, the follower is just gonna stop at a certain level for a while, then it's gonna move down. We would cancel the double things. Like for example, the, the, the floor is gonna go up, then directly it's gonna switch the direction to go down. But this is not preferred. You should have like, like a pause between the rise and the return. So these are the three essential events of motion of the follower. Like a part of the 360 degree of rotation of the cam will be used for rising up this follower is the motion of the follower away from the cam do it mean that is the motion during which the follower will be at rest. At rest, it means it will be stationary, not moving. At rest, it means that it is completely stopped, no motion in this way. So no motion, there is no velocity, there is no acceleration, everything is just, you know, nothing. And here rise, it means it's gonna move up, return it, it should be like moving down if we consider this you know, this arrangement. If this follower is horizontal, so we're gonna have like, this rise is gonna work like going right, and this return is gonna be like going left. You got my point? But generally this is like rise and return, like in one specific direction, like the you consider this follower in the vertical direction, so moving up is gonna be the rise, moving down is gonna be the return, and we would have a dual, uh, like a pause between these two different types of events of the motions of the of the follower itself. Make sense? For example, this figure is a typical example of the displacement diagram. This diagram is known as the displacement diagram. This is the displacement. Or let me just write the name here to be much more clear. This mechanism so again, this is commonly known as the displacement diagram of this cam mechanism. So this is the displacement. I just, because I just want to make sure that I do have a space for other things. Displacement diagram of the follower. So what is the displacement diagram? The displacement diagram, it is a description like a graphical representation of the motion of the follower to a cam. Like we do have a follower and this should be the description of the motion of the follower as a function or versus the cam angle. Again, the mechanism that we are going to consider is this one. So let us assume that this rise and return, this vertical movement of the follower like Y, we're gonna give it a symbol like Y, and the rotation is gonna be theta, which is the angle of rotation of the, of, uh, of the cam. So simply the cam to complete one cycle, it should be rotating 360 degrees. So starting from the zero as a reference angle of the cam, 
going all the way till the 360 degrees of the cam, this is one complete cycle. If we repeat the cycle, we shall end up with the same displacement profile. And on the vertical axis, this is the follower travel or movement in millimeters or centimeters, it depends on the unit, but these should be definitely like in, in, uh, in degrees. So this is like the cam motion and this is the corresponding follower location or movement from a reference point. This basically should be the location where Y, it should be like the distance from a zero point. You could consider that this is like X axis and this is the zero point and this is the Y axis. So where is the Y? Where is the location of this point? I'm talking about this tip, this point of contact of the follower, where it should be after one degree, two degrees, 100 degrees, 300 degrees, where it should be the location of this point with respect to the angle of rotation of the cam, this is what this displacement diagram gives us, right? So it is a complete description. So initially, the process it works in this way, like we start from zero, so there is no movement, this is our reference point. There is no, it means that this Y value should be zero. So we could consider this is like theta, and this is like the Y, right, of this follower in this case. So simply, initially, the process it works like we give a rise of this follower as long as we give rotation to the cam. So within this period of time, which is like from, as you can see, we're already breaking it down into some degrees. Uh, uh, so the, we don't have feel this is like 100. So we could say this is like 10 degrees, 20, 30, 40, 60, 70, and so on, or it depends on the breakdown that we're already giving for the scaling for this shape. But anyway, as you can see, like, like around 120 from zero to up to 120, we are giving rise. We are already moving up. The follower should be moving up in the vertical direction. So this is the rise period. We're gonna give a name to this period as a rise period, rise. Because we discussed that we have three events. Then within this period, of time or period of angle in terms of the angle here, this period basically we do have, which it should be like, like, uh, like 60 or kind of, because this is like 120 degrees and this is gonna be like, like 180 degrees. So the difference is gonna be like around 60 degrees. So for a 60 degree, we gonna have dual, which just standing, this is the dual motion or instant or event of motion where this at in this instant the the follower is gonna be moving. It will be just completely at rest or stationary. There is no velocity. There is no acceleration at all. Then it's going to descend, to return. So this is the return period. After the return, we would have another dual period, which is this one, because as you can see, there is no change in the y. There is no change in the y. It means there is no movement. But here we do have a change in the Y, we do have a change in the Y within the rise and the return period, so we can have like dual, another dual. So this is a specific motion, and as you can see, we would have the rise of this follower following this function, or we may have another function in this way, or it would be moving, rising up with this way. So there are lots of profiles here that would describe the rise, the same thing for the return of the follower. You got my point? Even we would pause between the rise and the return with the dual period. After the return, we're gonna end up or finish the cycle with another dual. How long this dual? The dual here it is for 60 degrees. Also here it would it is for a six degrees, but we would end up with a dual period with like 30 degrees or no dual at all. It depends. So as I mentioned, this is a typical example. This is another example of the displacement diagram. As you can see, starting from the zero angle of the cam up to the 360, so we're gonna have a rise, but this rise is gonna follow on like a very complicated, this is a simple profile uh, of increase or rise of the cam, uh, of the follower itself. Like this is the Y axis again, this is gonna be the Y axis, and this is gonna be the theta. As you can see within all of these periods, we do have rise. This is, we do have, but this within the rise till the complete left. So there is another keyword here, the left, this should be the total height. This total height here, this should be the left. 
which is the total height or the maximum height that can be attained by this follower, right? So as you can see, we do have within all of this period, within all of this period, we do have a rise to the left, to the complete left. It means that to reach the maximum height or the maximum level. But within this left period, which it should be within like 180 degrees, like half a circle of the cam, the follower is just rising, it's just moving up, but while it moves up, it's gonna keep moving up for a while, then it's gonna have like another dual stop, then it's gonna continue rising again. So that's why we would have rise, dual, then another rise, right? And as you can see, it would rise in within this 60 degrees, it rises within this 60 degrees with a specific profile, then, <laughs> then it doubles for like, like 30 degrees, then it tries again for the rest, for the other 90 degree with another harmonic function that describe this curve. So as you can see, if you just observe the curve, this curve is totally different than this curve here, right? Then we can have a double period, then we're gonna have a full, this uh, like a complete return in this way. So this is the return period. This is the other period here, which is just return. And this one is returning with only one specific curve, which is this one. Then we're gonna have another dual period as already given up there. This is the another dual. And there is a dual period in the middle, right? So this is another displacement profile or diagram for the follower itself. So again, the key idea is to try to do something like this thing. This is our objective in this part. It's just, you will be given a specific displacement diagram, but displacement, the displacement diagram will be given as a description to you. It means that I'm going to describe the displacement diagram to you. Then you're gonna draw this displacement diagram like, for example, I'm going to give you some details about the rise, how this fuller is going to rise, how it's going to return, how it's going to dwell between the rise and the return. Is it any other dwell beyond the return period or there is no dwell? So all of these details will be given as a description, word description, written description for this displacement diagram. Your objective then is to convert this description, this written things of description into graph is just to blot or to draw this displacement diagram. Then what is to come up with the suitable profile of the cam that gives us this displacement. So depending on the profile, as you can see, we have here a straight line, it moving uniform. Then it, we, we're going to have like a double period, then we're going to have a descent of the displacement. So from this displacement diagram, your objective just to come up with a suitable profile. This is the profile of the camp that is needed to give us this displacement or achieve this displacement of the follower. And this can be going to be done all graphically using the graphical method because this is the most probable and practical even method to come up with the design of the camp. Design of the camp, it means that to come up with the shape or the profile of the camp that needed to give a predetermined uh, uh, displacement diagram of the of the uh, of the follower. So to find something for a predetermined information, this is the meaning of design. So that's why it is named as cam design, and this is the objective of this part. So as you can see, we're gonna do two things. You will be given the problem in a written description way, and your objective is just to come up. This is the final target. Is just to come up with the profile of the cam. For a, pre, for a predetermined described displacement of the profile of the, of the follower itself. So you're gonna do two things. First, you're gonna draw the displacement diagram, then you're gonna work over the cam profile. So that's why I'm going to explain to you first how I'm gonna show you how we can draw the displacement diagram of a follower, then we're gonna move to the uh, cam profile. So this like two parts of or this chapter is going to be uh, split over these two parts just to give you the skills how you can draw the displacement diagram, then how you can come up with the profile cam. Make sense?